Ready? Yes. All right. I never start these, so I don't know how to do it. So that was perfect. No, 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 no. That can't be it. That, that can't be it. the beginning. Good job. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How is your blue slash purple stained lips? Mm, yeah, we got an ice cream cake. Because we hit 100,000 downloads. Whoop, whoop. And purple because Christine's drinking wine. Oh, that's right. Right. I'm a rainbow of colors. <laughs> Although it does just sound like the, someone just punched me in the mouth, blue and purple. It does look like a bruise, but mm. like all encompassing your mouth. I'm really beautiful. Um, in honor of us having 100,000 thousand downloads mm -hmm. i know you worked really hard and i know i worked really hard and geo did the brunt of the work oh, so all of it mostly i got geo a present what you can see i'm not wearing my usual baseball cap what no am I, what am i wearing today she's wearing her um her marty mcfly back to the future hat yes mm -hmm. i wanted to get geo something so we can match <gasps> what they didn't have dog hats <laughs> so instead i got him this <gasps> Where did you find this? It was quite a search. Oh my god, she literally just pulled out a Marty McFly, like, uh... It's lenticular fabric. Lenticular bow tie. It's, it's made from the same material as the hat. It's like the hologram. Like, it's the same... Holy shit. It's, this, it's literally the exact same fabric. Oh my god, it's like that rainbow shiny color. I'm trying to describe it's a, it. It's, if anyone's seen Back to the Future, it's the, it's the exact material of the hat. But it's this bow tie. This is unreal. So I got it for him. So next time we go to the park and watch Back to the Future Part 2, he will be fitting. And we have to do this part of our, for our engagement photos, you and Gio can take like matching photos. Well, interesting you say that because I contacted the company that I got that from and they're going to make me a bigger human sized one for your wedding. <laughs> Whether or not you've decided that I can Shut wear the that, up. <laughs> I've already decided. If I can't wear it at the ceremony, I'm going to wear it at the reception. I'm just picturing my stepmom being like, she's going to not is that? know what kind of person I am. It's going to be great. What is that This is epic. girl thing in a suit with a <laughs> oh, no. lenticular Barty McFly <laughs> bow tie? Oh my God, he's going to look so handsome. He's going to, I know, I already know. Um, I already know. You can't, already can't deal with how handsome he is now. I You're going to have a freaking anxiety. So well, actually, I have a gift for you too, funny enough. We do this all the time. How? I feel like. It's uh, like. It's like we know, but we don't know. Okay. But we know. Oh, you have like a. It's like in a bag with tissue paper and everything. It's from Geo. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding you. Which so is I got, hilarious. I yeah. got Geo a present and you. He got me a present? Yeah. And we didn't even know about it? No. That's actually really funny. <laughs> because him and I share one soul. That's right, why. sure, yes. <laughs> oh, baby Gio! So sweet. <laughs> I got a key to Christine's apartment with a little camo leash thing. This means that we've taken our relationship to the next level. You and Gio. Oh, okay. Oh, well, I thought... Just shutting me down. Listen. Just another one of those rejections we can talk about sometime. I tried to give you a gift. He said it was, it was Gio and you had the same the soul, so... It does say Gio on it with a little heart mm -hmm. as the dot for the eye. So I take it this for this weekend. Yep. He wants you to come hang out this weekend. Because the reason I drink is because I will be babysitting Gio this weekend. The reason I drink is that I'll be out of town this weekend having an anxiety attack <laughs> every five minutes. Which about. one of us will lose it first? I'm going to need someone to chaperone both of you at all times. Yeah. But at least I have a key to your apartment so we can... I can come snuggle him. It'll be great. Little baby Gio. Thank you. Thank you, you. And you really went the extra mile with the bag. You could just hand me a key, but... Oh, it's more fun that way. Aww. Okay. <clears throat> now what? Do we open that? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Do you want to announce it? Sure, yeah. We got uh, our second piece of fan mail to our P.O. box. We <laughs> got our first box. We got our first package. That's right. Whoop. And it came from New Zealand. Which blows my mind. Like, thank you. Like, someone from New Zealand really cares about us, and it's making a lot of noise. It is. It's from Jess. Thank you, Jess. Jess. Thank you, Jess. Um, I just repeated you. I know. And it also says customs declaration, because I have to write what's in it. Um, it says oh. chocolate, comma, lollies. Lollies? I know. I got excited about that. Lollies is not an American phrase. They say iced lollies to mean popsicles in England. Iced lollies? Ooh, shit. And we almost broke the mic. Ice lolly. I, I, iced or ice? Ice lolly. Ice lolly. I think. Instead of a popsicle? Yeah. Okay, hang on. Because isn't a popsicle a brand name? Is it? I don't know. I've never heard... If someone asked if I wanted an ice lolly, I would not know what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> be like, get away from me. I'd be like, no, thank you. 
Okay, let's open it. All right. Oh, there's a note. Hey, ladies, hope you like these kiwi treats. I included some Marmite. Oh, Marmite! Oh, I've never had that. Oh, my God. My friend used to talk about that all the time. I I hear it's horrible. I've never tried it. They eat it on toast. Yeah, yeah. If you're game. Oh, well, we're We're, so game. We're game. Also, some local chocolate and some kiwi tomato sauce, parentheses, ketchup. (laughs) Okay. Enjoy. Jess, a.k.a. Pody Jess. Is this, is, this, is this what all paper looks like in New Zealand? This is <laughs> beautiful. It's so much nicer than ours. I like how we act like it's some... Also, when I heard kiwi treats, was not thinking about New Zealand. I was like, kiwi-flavored treats? Oh, my Yummy. God. Um, we got some lolly scramble, obviously. Lolly scramble. This is Marmite. Ew. This is tomato sauce. AKA you know, ketchup. I'm kind of interested in it. NZ's favorite. Instead of U.S. NZ. I mean, like, I, I know. I've, how often do you see shit that says New Zealand on it? Stop smelling it. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I got you a chocolate fish. You're welcome. Thank you. That's um, pretty good. What is this? Oh, bigger pack. I like how this it's is called. It's a wine gum. Oh, my God. It is a wine gum. They're wine gums. Oh, that's so cute. These look way better than the other ones. I want to try the Marmite, but I'm also pretty terrified to try the Marmite. Also, also it says sanitarium at the top. What? That's like the brand, oh. sanitarium. Ew. Almost looks like sanatorium. It does. Remember when I said that sanatorium was actually sanitarium? Yeah, it's actually a label for Marmite. Whoops. <laughs> How do they say it? Marmite. How do they say it? Marmite. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I learned? That was awful. You know how, um, um, like, if something gets lowered or something gets risen up? Yeah. If you say rise up, like rising up, mm-hmm. say that. Rise up. And then say... Um, oh, like rollerblades say blades. Oh, rise up blades. Ah! Yes, razor blades and rise up blades. Oh my god, that's amazing. Now I can't unhear it. What does it actually say? Now I feel like I'm just saying, saying rise. Oh, rise up blades. Rise up blades. Rise up blades. Oh, I'm but now so... it sounds like razor blades. All right, well, thank you, Jess. Awesome. You are such a sweetheart. Thank we'll you. We'll snack through this. Man, we just, we got ice cream cake, we got uh, bow ties and uh, candy. candy. Oh my well, God. Well, we got lollies. Oh yeah, ice lollies. Like, they're not called, are they called candies there? See? Yeah. Are I they think. called sweets? Maybe sweets. I'm going to try one of these. What is that? <gasps> they're milkshakes! Oh shit. You have a wine one and I have a milkshake one. How did I not get How that? How did we not even notice? We were saying rise up lights this whole time. Oh, that's, that's why. why. Oh man. Oh man, this is the best day of my life, dude. I like how we don't even care if there might be, like, <laughs> anthrax in here. <laughs> it's literally called milkshakes. Oh, my God. Wait. This candy is called milkshakes. You guys, these wine gums are actually amazing. Does it taste like wine? It tastes like gummy bears. Oh, really? That's what I was saying. I don't think these have wine flavors. Man, Jess, you just made our day. Wow. Thank you. I don't know how I'm going to tell a story when I've got this thing in my mouth. I know. I just want to keep eating. I keep, I keep chewing into the microphone as if anyone wants to hear that. It's just proof that we actually ate the food. Now anybody who's listening knows that they can mail us something and we will definitely eat it. So I feel like people are going to try and poison us. I mean, we're going to eventually... Let's do a blooper reel. We'll have Marmite. I was going to say the same thing. Let's make that a Patreon thing. That would be fun. You can watch us hate ourselves. Oh, we can do it like a YouTube or a Facebook Live or something. We can do like a... I feel like our facial reactions have to be part of it. That's true. We can do like a video series. If you would like to send us candy or disgusting (laughs) foods to eat... Our address you can uh, send us things to is, and that's why we drink, at 1920 Hillhurst Avenue, number 1064, Los Angeles, California, 90027. United States. USA, where we don't have superior America. candy like you do in New Zealand. All right. Scare me. I'm try- I, I think I scared myself because I can't find my notes. Oh, they're in my wallet. They're in your wallet. Well, I knew I would lose them otherwise. <laughs> Except you lose your wallet all the time. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that could have turned out really bad. Okay. Also, I do want to make a point. I was I was going to try and call my mom during this. and Oh, God. I'm not going to now. Calm down. Because I texted her and said, are you near your phone? She hasn't answered. So we're just going to go with her original response. Okay. But I, this is our 22nd episode. Mm-hmm. And 22 is my lucky number. <gasps> That's right. Therefore, this is super meaningful. And what are the odds I get ice cream cake and candy and Geo at my feet on our 22nd episode? Oh, my God. So I texted my mom yesterday saying, we're recording episode 22. Anything you'd like to contribute? Any wise words? 
but I think what she read was any motivational tips or anything you want to tell me personally. <laughs> no carbs after 10 p.m. Yeah. So she ended up, it was kind of ominous. Uh-oh. Uh, every time I see the number 22, I think of you when I'm gone, when I'm gone mm. and visit you from beyond, you will know it's me because a 22 will show up whenever <laughs> I'm near <laughs> Keep in mind, uh, that's not like a new thing. That's why, like 22, is, that's why 22 is a big thing in our family. Because your mom's dead and is haunting you? No, because anyone who's um, passed away in our family beforehand understands that 22 is like the sign that we'll know you're around. And so when they pass away, like, we've already made the agreement when they were alive. So anytime we see a 22, it's like reassurance that they're Aww. around. So she really just stated the obvious. I was like, that's not. Yeah, that's like, that's the reason I texted it's like, you. Yeah, why don't you tell me A is the first letter of the alphabet? Okay. Thanks, Linda. Thanks for the information I know. You guys, whenever you see a 22, Linda is near. Okay, so I also got I one last thing that is involved with this, so you can't edit it out. We have a listener that um, wrote in to me. She slid in some IDMs. She said, Hi, hello. I just wanted to let you know that you're amazing and very inspiring to me, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Sorry I'm hella awkward, but you're my dude. Aww. And I wanted to let you know you're my ultimate dude. And then she said, okay, cool. Have a wonderful life. <laughs> wait, wait, what? She said, hey, hey, what's up? Hello. Yeah, and then she said, see ya. And her name's Kyler. So I uh, responded and asked her, like, oh, well, tell me about yourself. And she said, um, fun fact, I used to be in theater and we had to do a monologue on a historical event. And I'm hella fucked up. And uh, my parents were worried I was a serial killer. What? So I wrote a monologue as a girl with schizophrenia, and she walked in on people getting waterboarded. And it's, like, apparently a real story. <gasps> it's, like... And then she said one thing less to another, and she ended up bringing up that she also did a... Mo- in that monologue, she was talking about the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. Yeah. And so because we had that whole conversation, I was like, hmm. And so that's what my story's about. <gasps> Awesome! So thank you, Kyler, for telling me about your weird monologue. And I'm, I'm a little confused. So wait, the she, girl with schizophrenia was not her, right? No, she wrote a... It was a monologue about... Oh, she wrote the monologue. I don't really know. Okay. It was in, It had to do with the... I didn't... A- I should have asked. But no, no. I- <laughs> somehow the girl was in, was in Trans-Allegheny and also had schizophrenia. Oh, so she so was... So she, she did a monologue as a girl from the Lunatic Asylum. So those were two connected. Okay, I get it. So... That's what I'm doing. Thanks, Kyler. I'm uh, a little pissed, but I'll get over it. Why? She slid into your DMs and not mine. Well, she's also LGBT. So I get all of them. I'm an ally. <laughs> <laughs> Said the white privilege in the room. As I pour wine into my glass. <laughs> oh, yeah. What are you drinking? Should we... It's, gar- it's really bad. It's garbage As wine. I continue to drink it. Okay. And I'm not drinking a milkshake because I'm eating ice cream cake. And milkshake candies. And I'm eating milkshake candies. So and I'm eating go. wine gums and drinking... I don't want to say what it is because it's not great. It was like six bucks. I, I like... Oh, well, there's your problem. Doubled my budget for oh. it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a cheap bastard. <laughs> okay. Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum in Weston, West Virginia. Ooh. West Virginia is a creepy place. <clears throat> it is. That was where Harper's Ferry was, too. Oh. My car got broke down there one time. Oh, by a ghost? I'm sorry. <laughs> Am I interrupting your story? No. No, by no gas, and Aww. it was terrifying. I want to tell you another story, but we don't have time. Okay. Do you want to? I do. Just but tell it. I'll edit. So, uh, on the way here, speaking of the 22, that's how you can edit into this very segue-ishly. Great. Um, so, because my family always believes in like 22 following us right anytime i see a 22 i just do like a cross oh but so i just do like a little like a thing uh-huh, uh-huh. just to say like oh i i recognize you seeing me i saw one while i was driving here and it was like the highway sign yeah said 22 so i did it and then this cop car with people arrested in the back was driving next to me and they looked at me like they watched me doing <gasps> the cross and the guy that's arrested is staring at me through the window like I'm the weirdest person on earth. And I'm like, you're arrested. Like, you're literally going Wait, to jail you and you're judging serious? me. Yeah, I'm That's like serious. our stories combining, like, the criminal. I know. <laughs> that is the, that's the, the true crime and the paranormal. He sees you, like, acknowledging the spirits. <laughs> he was literally, he looked at me and he was looking straight at me. There was no denying that that's, he was 
judging me entirely. And I was like, you're on your way to prison right now. Like, I'm not the one that's that to be judged. It's so creepy. Anyway, there's that story. Love it. Okay, the Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, which I'm going to lovingly call Tala. <laughs> T-A-L-A. It's really lovingly. Well, that's apparently what some people actually call it. Oh. So I'm not just making it up. Okay, fun fact, it is the largest hand-cut stone masonry building in America. Sure. And the second largest in the world next to the Kremlin. Wow. There you go. That's your fun fact. So fun. Um, in 1990, it became a National Historic Landmark, and it is over 240,000 square feet, over 1,300 feet long, has 920 windows, and over 900 doors. The walls are two and a half feet thick. Ooh. Dense enough to muffle the screams. Okay, so. <laughs> In Tala, no one can hear you scream. <laughs> okay. So, uh, it wasn't until the 1770s that facilities actually started um, to house the, quote, insane. Mm. Um, before that, people were just, like, hiding the, their family members up in attics and pretending that they didn't exist. Ugh, what year was that? The so- 1770s. Okay. Was, like, the beginning of facilities actually housing. Um, so, but even then, the first places were kind of used to hide people from society, not try to, like, right. rehabilitate them. No, I get it. They all pretended that being insane was uh, not curable or treated or... They just just thought it was impossible and we're going to quarantine them somewhere. Yes. So in the 1800s, um, there was this huge uh, movement for enlightenment and how to treat people. So like Dorothea Dix was a big person involved in this. And by the end of it, there was basically all these laws being created for more humane care Mm. for people that were institutionalized. Uh, And Tala... Began construction in 1858 uh, under the supervision of a guy named Kirkbride, Tom Kirkbride, who was a humanist. And he was also, I think, the first doctor to um, believe that whether or not you could cure it, you could at least treat mental illness. Oh, wow. So he was very ahead of his time. Seriously. And so he was quoted saying that those who are afflicted are not disabled from appreciating books or physical comforts. So he was the Aww. first people being. He was the first one being like people deserve respect no matter what their state. They're is. still people. Yeah, exactly. So he started helping build this institution, but he um, he had all these different ways of instead of what he had seen before, people being chained in solitary cells Ugh. or just being held down and shit yeah. like that. It's not he hard was, to go far from there. Right. He was like, okay, I'm gonna build this big open space. Everything's gonna be a comfortable living situation, and he made this specific architecture layout in his building with staggered walls so it was basically like a giant hall but the way that the walls were built all the sunlight kept going farther and farther in so everyone got sunlight no matter what room you were in damn like it was very ahead of its time it's nicer than most apartments i've lived in yeah they started building it in 1858 and then construction stopped halfway through because of the civil war oh and uh half the asylum was built and half of it wasn't so it was still kind of like not actually prepared to be anything but also became the barracks for union soldiers oh so you can imagine that there's some version of soldier hauntings as well because which is kind of so creepy to me when it's like the old-timey soldiers in their uniforms Mm -hmm. so uh in 1864 the first patients were admitted but construction continued for another almost 20 years and um Originally, it was designed to house only 250 people. and So, like, in theory, it was going to be this great livable area for institutionalized people, and they had, like, 250 rooms. Right. But it ended up being massively overcrowded and carrying 10 times its capacity, and the hospital held 2,600 people by the (gasps) 1950s. 10 times its capacity. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Over 10 times its capacity. And at the time, because even though, like, this guy, Tom Kirkbride, Bride, you have such a hard time with this. I name. don't know why I can't figure out his name. Kirkbride. <laughs> Even though at the time he was considered revolutionary for helping with, like, uh, patients have more humane treatment and all that, it was still... The 1800s. The 1800s. And oh, right, right. mental illness was still basically a non-existent concept at this point. So everything, everything, everything was considered mentally insane. Ugh. So anyone could be admitted for any reason at all. Didn't people drop off their wives because they were, like, just too... You could literally just, like, just drop them off. Had, like, 
PMS or we're just too much to handle. Funny you say that because I have a whole list here called reasons for admission. Oh, shit. Sorry. I will just read some of them off because I'm telling you there's a hundred reasons. Oh, I'm sure it goes on and on. I will read you my favorite ones. Great. So basically I'm going to be institutionalized. A thousand percent. Uh, with We would both have been... We'd, both, <laughs> we'd be gone. No, I'm not... I'll just read the ones that we would have done. Um, okay. Imaginary female trouble. Check. Immoral life. Check. Laziness. Oh, oh, double check. Uh, menstrual deranged. Ugh. Mental excitement. <laughs> just, you know, being excited. <laughs> mental excitement. Overaction of the mind. Overtaxing mental powers. What the fuck? Periodical fits. <laughs> the loss of a lawsuit. The loss of a lawsuit? Listen, they get weird. One of them is bad whiskey, which I don't know what it is, but you'd be institutionalized for it. <laughs> and uh, another one is uh, bad company, which I'm sure I am. <laughs> We'd both be screwed. Business nerves. I don't know what that means. Um, These are not real things. It gets worse. I'm just reading. The it gets worse? I'm reading the light ones right now because I want a specific conversation to happen when I tell you the other ones. Oh, good. One is fighting fire. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Um, the war. Like, can I do that today with the election? Can I just... Uh, I need to be admitted right now. I feel like everyone needs to be admitted. Um, time of life. Whatever that fucking means. Also, if you get old, maybe. I don't know. Or just your... your it's, it's your time. This is your insane time of life. Um, I don't know what uterine derangement is, as opposed to menstrual derangement. It sounds horrible. They're both different things. Vicious vices... Christine's got those. That's me. Um, superstition, I would be put away. Oh, absolutely. Um, the vices and the superstition, we'd be done for. I don't know what Salvation Army means, <laughs> but I guess if you're part of it, you go. Like the Salvation Army, where you drop off your clothes? Also, fell from horse. That's like, that's like Lifeline back then, like, oh, I can't get up. You know what? I knew a guy named Carl, speaking of crazy Carl. Mm -hmm. He was Chinese and his name was Carl. He didn't speak English, but I watched him fall off a horse one time. Okay. In China. Okay. And then he bought a back scratcher from a flea market and made us all like scratch his back. Sounds like a weird tale that like a troll would tell under a bridge. (laughs) (laughs) He fell off a horse and my stepmom and I burst out laughing and then we were like, oh, that's not good. He was fine. Let's talk about masturbation. <laughs> Perfect segue. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, by the way, my father said he's just now starting to listen to our episode. So oh, uh, my dad this is a perfect one to start on. Almost in tears and was like, you've really disappointed me. Well, sorry, Mr. Schieffer. Get ready to buckle up. He's cause... never going to get to this point. <laughs> no, no. Um, okay. So here are all the different ways you can masturbate to get admitted into an institution back then. Oh, there's certain ways. Masturbation and syphilis. So the combo deal. Oh, man. Masturbation for 30 years. Does that mean, like, <laughs> at a time? Does that mean, like, like, all at once? One session? Like, who logged that? Like, oh, still going? Okay, 16 years to go. Like, my, this is day 30 of my wife. <laughs> or year 30. Oh, my God. We've hit the year 30. Okay, so, um, that. <laughs> um, tobacco and masturbation. So are you doing them at the same time or just, like, separately? Like or smoking a pipe? suppressed masturbation so either you can totally masturbate or not at all and you're still going to go you can go for 30 years or not at all or never and no matter what you'll still end up in the same place sad i mean it's just a it's a very weird um oh there was another one of uh (laughs) it was like epileptic fits during masturbation it's like (laughs) first of all why aren't you just being hospitalized for epilepsy <laughs> why do we got to bring masturbation you know why? because it? it's probably like if a woman ever had an orgasm they were like oh, she's it's like hysteria yeah they're like oh that's not normal because by the way men that's how you know it's real um, if it looks like she's <laughs> having an actual seizure anyway you're doing a good job hi mom okay so oops oh hi mom too <laughs> oops and that's why we drink uh, okay so anyway those were all the reasons the, there were several more we'll we'll post the picture because it's just ridiculous the shit that you could get so there's an actual photo of <gasps> Reasons for admission, 1864 to 1889, Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. That's nuts. Go ahead and Google image it if you want to read along, guys. That's, I'll put it in the show notes. All right. So, um, some of the ways that people, um, some of the ways that they took care of these people, quote, aka the, their attempts at helping them. Right. Aversion therapy was used to save homosexuals. So they would just... 
It was suggestive therapy where they would essentially poison you in a small dose and then make you look at like, yeah, they would make you same sex. They would make you look at a gay shit while you're poisoned and feel horrible. That way you would associate the pain and sickness with the gay things that you're attracted to. That way one day, if you did it enough, you'd be conditioned to not be attracted like to that stuff because you feel sick. That's so fucked yeah. up. Well, they still, they still do that in some well, places. I was about to say, we've obviously come real far in the, yeah. Cause there, there's still like straight camps where they, they make you look at gay porn and then you have to drink Epicac. And like hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. 2017. Um, okay, so aversion therapy, chemical castration. No! Yeah, for not masturbating, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, hydrotherapy, so ice baths or spraying you with ice water and then leaving you in a cold room. Still doing that shit. Electroshock therapy. Um, my favorite is the transorbital lobotomies, Mm-mm. a.k.a. the ice pick operation. Yep, yep, yep. yep where yep. a sharp pronged device was driven through the orbital socket of the eye. Uh, so firmly that it would take a sharp blow into the brain, causing permanent damage. However, relieving some of your more severe symptoms of your non-hysteria or the war. They'd like stir your brain around to make sure it was... Essentially, but with a knife through your eye. An ice pick. Well, uh, Dude That's Fucked Up did an episode on lobotomies, and I listened to two minutes and was like, this is the only episode I'm never going to listen to. <laughs> so Dr. Freeman at the hospital, he performed 228 lobotomies per week. Ooh! Imagine having literally done nothing wrong, and they're like, oh, we're going to stab you in the eyes now until your brain gets stabbed. Hold still. They just open your eyeballs. Oh. That's some clockwork orange shit. Um, Reports of patients killing each other. No surprise, because there's 10 times too many people, and everyone's got an illness. Uh Uh-huh. In one instance, two patients hung another patient (gasps) named Dean, and they did it using a set of bed sheets, but when his neck wouldn't snap the right way, they cut him down. And they lied him on the ground and lifted a metal bed frame and placed one of the legs on his head <laughs> and then jumped on the bed until his head was crushed in. No, 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 no. So they no. essentially curb stomped him using a bed. No, what the fuck? Female patients were sexually assaulted by male prisoners, which is a very light way of saying aggressively molested. Standard. Um, sometimes even by the guards, patients were stabbed by each other. Some hung themselves. One patient um, got stabbed 17 times and then lied out in the hallway just... And then just so the other people who stabbed him could watch someone die. They just wanted to know what it would look like. What? Um, Former employees have also been attacked. Uh, There was one nurse who went missing and her body was found two months later at the bottom of an unused staircase. How unused is this fucking staircase that two months go by and no one noticed a dead body or its smell? There's thousands of people in this place and they don't notice a dead body. So the hospital was closed at the end of the 20th century because of another movement um, of... uh, because of another Enlightenment movement uh, where they refused to tolerate and or fund the overcrowding and cruelty of the asylum. So it was abandoned until 2007, and then, like every other asylum, it was saved, and the proceeds of ghost tours go to restore Standard. Um, okay, so that's all the history. I'm just going to tell you the ghost stuff now. Yay! So there's four floors to this thing, and I thought it'd just be easier if I went by floor. <laughs> oh, sure. Um, so the first floor was known as the Civil War Wing, and it was the oldest part of the hospital. Oh, that's it? No. Fun fact. No, the, no, I was just, like, giving you an idea of what the floor was. Oh, I, sorry. This floor... Oh, it was, sorry. The second floor. Jesus. That was the second floor. The first floor, we'll get to. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to do this in order, by the way. I'm just going to do it by four. <laughs> Nobody said we were going to go one through four. <laughs> Stop expecting <laughs> You're being from numberist, us. honestly. Yeah, we didn't promise you anything. Um, okay, so the second floor was the <laughs> Civil War wing. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, and... Uh, ghost soldiers were seen walking through. You can see shadow people crawling around. Okay. Like uh, crawling, uh, like nope. army crawling, but ghosts. Why is that so much worse? Because it's even less humanoid. Yeah, that's probably why. Uh, lights and orbs, unexplained breezes and cold spots in the middle of a very open area where it should all be cold. Full body apparitions of past patients. Um, along a hallway on this floor was a patient named... Oh, this was the first floor. So now we're going downstairs. Um, you literally <laughs> just told me it was the second floor. Yeah, the second floor was the Civil War. Oh. And then the first floor, there was a ghost named Ruth, who, at the when she was alive, she was really aggressive towards men and is still aggressive towards men. So if she sees a guy on a tour, she'll throw things at them. Oh, shit. She'll tug on their shirt or grab their leg. Um, a lot of guys feel like they get poked or pushed against walls. Some have heard um, someone hissing at them. Oh, oh, oh that's creepy. Um, so there's that. Um, I like how you, it's like she's really aggressive towards men. Sometimes she pokes them. She some, like you know like on the playground. <laughs> she Sometimes just, she shoves them against walls, but you know she really likes you. She's just poking you. 
<laughs> pulling your hair. Um, you can also hear uh, metallic sounds of invisible gurneys still being pushed down the hall. Oh, that's creepy. Uh, on the second floor, which was the Civil War floor. Going upstairs again. Oh, okay. The, I'm the, trying to visualize it, you know. The two, there were two patients who committed suicide by hanging themselves in <gasps> curtain rods, and you can still see their shadows hanging where the tub was. Mm. Um, many hear their names getting called out, even if no one's actually said their name on the tour, Ew. which means like they have that internal innate knowledge of you. That's fucked up. Um, and then Dean, the one who got his head curb stomped. Oh, fuck. Um, he, people will hear him crying no in the room that he got Stop. killed in. Stop it. Uh, so the third floor is where all the isolation cells were, because I thought this place was yeah, what a- where everyone goes to live comfortably, but I guess not. I mean, they still use those, so I guess that was progressive at the time. So in the isolation sh- cells, um, there are still shackles on the floor. Um, there's original chain, or there were originally chains, and later on they became leather. Um, mm. I don't know what you call them. Leather handcuffs? Binds. Leather blinds. Leather handcuffs. Leather. Who? <laughs> Belinda blinked. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so on the, on that floor, on the third floor, the nurse's quarters, the doors will close by themselves and a nurse named Elizabeth who died in the hospital, uh, can sometimes be seen doing clerical work, which would has to fucking suck. We're even in the afterlife for stuck at work. <laughs> she's like, I can't get out of here. Um, she'll also be seen running between rooms as if she's like running between operations. Oh God. And some people, this is the creepy part. Some people have walked around and turned the corner and she'll be standing right fucking Ugh. there staring at you. No. Um, on the fourth floor, there is an apparition called the creeper, which <laughs> is just a solid black mass that will like slink and glide through the hallway, like through doors and then up the door or like around the wall. Like, we'll literally just like, like, um, you know, Alex Mack. No. Like the Nickelodeon show. No. She turned into like this silver goop. <gasps> I just blew your mind. Well, it was Alex Mack, but instead of silver goop, it was like black, jet black. That's so creepy. Jet black Alex Mack. Boom. That's, uh, we're going to create a <laughs> spinoff series, Nickelodeon, if you're listening. Cool. Um, okay. So... There were also isolation cells on the fourth floor, and people have gone in and gotten EVPs of someone saying, get out, and you can hear another guy saying, calm down, which is exactly what the um, guards used to say to the people in there who are freaking out. Mm, that's so sad. One group, oh, this is really cool. One group, uh, they were trying to follow the creeper on the fourth floor, and they kept trying to take pictures, and they finally saw the giant black mass, and when they asked, they had a spirit box with them, and... They said, what are you? And the spirit box said, demon. Uh, Also uh, on the fourth floor is Lily's room, which uh, is probably one of the creepier hallways because there's a girl there who, again, I watched the videos. I will give you the links to it. But so there was a little girl. There's a bunch of different stories about how she actually showed up. Some people think she was born in the hospital and died uh, as a kid. Some people think she was abandoned by her parents there. Um, But basically, she's the friendliest, nicest ghost there and everyone is really protective of her and she's absolutely willing to talk to people so she really really likes the flashlight game yeah and she likes playing um catch like she'll roll the ball to you Uh, but it's like the same it's like the same one i talked about last week where they'll jump around the room and show you like the floor isn't uneven that's crazy and there's a video i watched where the ball didn't move for a good five minutes and they were trying to get her to move the ball and all of a sudden it just starts kind of like going back and forth Uh -uh. like someone's like playing like shifting it from hand to hand that's creepy and um uh there are other people who have left snacks for her so like one girl left cracker jack uh, in the room but like left it in the box and then she was walking down the hallway to go downstairs and she could hear someone playing with the box and shaking it and so she went back and the box was open and then she left candy there too and the candy was unwrapped <gasps> and when she went to go she left a recorder in there to see if she could pick up any noises and later she went back and she heard an EVP that said, thanks for the snacks. What? That would be me as a ghost. Me as a ghost, yeah. <laughs> Please bring a snack. <laughs> it's like, thanks for the snacks. I've I been mean, starving for hundreds of years. <laughs> That's me in real life. Like, we're sitting here eating people's snacks that they send us. Uh, so... Um, that's her. She like she also she remembers people that have already visited, and she'll favor certain ones. So she'll do the same things with them. Like that is so weird. There's some guides who know her because they'll she'll tug on their shirt, but some people she'll like hold hands with. That's like kind of sad. It's actually very heartbreaking. She's yeah. like alone there. There's also been EVPs of a uh, little girl saying "mommy," or "I want my mommy," or "stop." I know, sad shit like that. 
Um, okay. You can also hear, qu- quote, crazy screams, as in, like, like deranged. Deranged screams. That is um, terrifying. Unexplained lights flashing, and the guides say that those are two spirits named Frank and Larry. Apparently, they just like turning on lights. Frank and Larry. <laughs> I feel like we'd be the Frank and Larry of that A story. Thousand percent. <laughs> um, you can hear footsteps of someone running towards you. Good. Um, you can feel spirits tugging on your clothes. One woman heard a. Uh, one person heard a woman scream, and then it was confirmed on an EVP later. You could rehear it. <sighs> you can smell vomit. Oh God. Um. So- you can oh some see a figure walking behind uh walking down the hall behind two chairs that are sitting out there it'll stop turn around (laughs) and then appear to hide behind the chair and then peek out at you like a full-blown grown man shadow you can like watch him like get behind a chair and like stare at you that just freaked me out one guy saw a shadow figure running out of a room and cross the hallway and down to the day room where um the patients used to sit like the lobby, I guess. Right. Um, so someone saw a shadow figure walk out of a room and then turn the corner to go into that room after he was just trying to, he was trying to, I guess, get some sort of activity. And so he was saying things that might provoke the ghost to do something. And so he said, there are patients downstairs waiting for you. And then all of a sudden he saw a ghost turn the corners to head down to the lobby where the patients used to sit Uh. and his spirit box got him uh recorded him saying i'm here Ah! um also uh groups have seen a shadow figure pacing in the hall and then the spirit box has said no exit (laughs) jesus um there's also they've gotten a lot of evps and spirit box readings talking about murder asylums and the paranormal great and one person didn't really believe it he did a, a tour on his own like left the group and started walking around and he heard people come downstairs, so to himself, he was like, I guess everyone's going to the bathroom. And then the spirit box, after not working all night, said urine. Urine? As in, like, going to the bathroom. And then he a... He goes, like, I know this one. And then a, f- a bat flew through. Uh-uh. And so the guy ducked, and the, the spirit box said, fly. What the fuck? And so he was like, what the hell? And so he started, like, tapping on it. Like, he started hitting it to try and, like, see if it's actually working or not. And the next thing the... Um, the spirit box said was gentle, slower, and thumb. Like, cause he was like tapping on it so hard. Oh my God. And then you can see, um, you can see shadow figures peeking out at you and then running away when you call them out. And then there's been EVPs of people saying, shut up. Fuck <laughs> you. Hi, I'm here. Um, and then the last two I'm going to say are, they tried figuring out what happened to Dean, the Aww. guy that got his head smashed in. And they said, what happened to you? And the ghost box picked up the word murdered. Mm. And then when they said, do you need help crossing over? The ghost box picked up perhaps. That's so sad. Em. So that's that. That's the worst part. I feel like they're all stuck there. And yeah. Oh. Oh, and you can also, I forgot to mention this, but in the, on the floor with the soldiers, you can see soldiers um, charging at you. Uh, something NBD. Ab- that is the worst. So there you go. Ugh. It's a, that was a long one. I'm sorry. But I had to. I had to uh, get back in the groove because the story I was going to tell you, I could not find any information. I ended up wasting like two hours researching. That's the worst. So then I was like, I have to make this good. So <sighs> there you go. What was the one you were going to do? Uh, it was an amusement park. Oh, okay. That was ooh, creepy, creepy, creepy. Are you ready to tell me a good murder? I am. Super good. Out in the streets, they call it Murder. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite songs, by the way. I like that song. It's a good one. Wait, let's do it again. Out in the streets, they call it murder. Okay. That was pretty good. <laughs> Sounds like the original. I'm basically Bob Marley. Basically. We can also call, we can also sing, I feel like Phil Collins with that effect, you know? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of songs we could ask. A lot of like 80s and beyond. What's one of the Phil Collins songs? Um... I can hear it calling in the air tonight. Oh, Lord. Doo-doom, 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 doo-doom. Okay. That was beautiful. I did that while eating another milkshake candy. I feel like everyone's going to be like, whoa, when did they get Phil Collins to guest on their podcast? <laughs> and Bob Marley. Wow. From Beyond the Grave. I mean, if anyone's going to do it, we're going to do it. You're not wrong. All right. What? I was going to say, this is like perfect for like teeth and dent. Oh, like the... 
retainer I, or whatever. Uh-huh. Oh, God, that's gross. Then. But that's exactly... If I died right now, you have my tooth imprint. I don't want that. If you died right now, I'd have your teeth, so I don't really see that. One time my mom was fucking eating lunch, and her goddamn tooth fell out. Ah! But, like, she was eating something mild like soup. And all of a sudden, she's <laughs> like, there's something in my mouth. And then she pulled <gasps> it out, and she was like, that's weird, and put it on the table and kept eating. And I was like... Are you white trash? That is so foul. One time I found a collection of teeth in my mom's cabinet, and she's like, I kept these. They're your baby teeth. And I'm like, you're such a fucking I have my freak. teeth, too, though. My mom has them in a... Are you supposed to do throw your teeth away? She put them in a jewelry box in mm-hmm. her drawer. It's That's so what I have. creepy. Why? Same with my wisdom teeth. I have my wisdom teeth. Ugh. Which, by the way, are fucking big. Mm-hmm. I kept them purely for science. So they I was like, showed That's me a, a photo of them, and I was like, I don't want those. I felt like a super saber tooth tiger. Well, that is so gross. Okay. Can uh, you please, please just tell me a story that doesn't involve murder today? I'm not really feeling it. Uh, it's your lucky day. I don't believe you. Well, you'd be right to not believe me. <laughs> you ready? Wow me. Wow. Really bring something to the table this time. All right. First, you wanted no murder, and now you want me to wow you, so I don't know. If you're going to do it, do it right. All right. Gonna dive right in. You mean crack into it? All right, yes, I'm going to crack right into it. (gasps) (laughs) There we go. Okay, I'm gonna tell you the story of Robert R. Reldon. I don't know him. Sweet. He's a pretty crazy dude. Okay, so uh, some of this information I got from uh, Michael Newton's An Encyclopedia of Modern Serial Killers, which I already added to my Amazon wish list. And you might get that October 2018. <laughs> what if I put that on my wedding registry? Which, by the way, is the official date now, can we say? Yeah, October 2018. You want to say the date? I aggressively got my venue sorted out already. 1013, hashtag I love lamp. 1013, 2018. Ooh, I wish there was like a number, like a conspiracy thing. I thought, I know, my mom goes, why is it on Friday the 13th? I'm like, <gasps> it's not on Friday the 13th. Aww. She just doesn't know how to look at a No, Renata, Renata and I want the same things. I yeah. feel like still 13 as a symbolically unlucky ember to have it the same month as Halloween. You're not really smart. Um, shut up. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, fine. I'm having my wedding on 1013, whether M likes it or not. And also... I love Lamp. I love Lamp. And also, buy me Michael Newton's An Encyclopedia of Modern Serial Killers. Uh, <laughs> if you want to donate to our Patreon page. <laughs> what if I just added my wedding registry link to the Patreon page? <laughs> Buy me this blender, please. Oh, <laughs> I would like this uh, Kate Spade cutlery set. Thank you. Ooh. Okay. As I was saying, on August 14th, 1974, the bodies of 17-year-old Mary Pryor and 16-year-old Lorraine Kelly were recovered from a wooded area, God, a wooded area near Montvale, New Jersey. Okay. They'd been raped and smothered to death. No. I know. It's a really bad story. I'm sorry. Uh, They'd last been seen four days earlier when they left home to go shopping together. Police believed they'd been hitchhiking uh, when they met whoever had killed them. A few months later, on December 13th, 1974, 14-year-old Doreen Carlucci and 15-year-old Joanne Delardo vanished from a church youth center in Woodbridge, New Jersey. Their bodies were discovered two weeks later, beaten and strangled. One victim was completely nude and the other was dressed in only shoes and a sweater. Oh no, Ooh, Christine! Really I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <sighs> See, every, everyone's fun is done now. The killer had used an extension cord to strangle Doreen. God damn it! I'm sorry. It just keeps getting worse and worse. Christine, I know. The following year, a 26-year-old woman named Susan Rains disappeared from her home. Eight days later, 22-year-old Susan Reeve vanished without a trace on her walk home from the bus stop after work. Both were still missing when 15-year-olds Denise Evans and Carolyn Hedgepeth disappeared from their home in Wilmington, Delaware. Their bodies were found shot execution style No. in Salem County, New Jersey the next day. What the fuck, Christine? I know, I know, I know. You really know. brought it today, huh? I know, I feel like we're just like hitting... Fuck. Hitting hard. Why did you do this? I don't know. Next thing I know, you're going to tell me I'm 25 and you're 26. It's going to be a, a real... What? <laughs> What are you talking about? I don't know. I'm just trying to trying to make shit up for the blooper reel. <laughs> Honestly, I can tell you're starting to lose it, so I just want to like throw shit out and see what you do with it. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're gonna tell me my birthday's in June. Oh my god. What are you Next thing about? I know, you're gonna tell me that I have student loans from Boston University for oh, the rest of my life. I'm never gonna talk about that. Okay, good. Don't make me realize it's real. Listen, 
stop bringing this entire podcast down. Okay, well, tell me more about execution-style murders then. Right, back to it. On October 27th and 28th, the remains of victims Susan Raines and Susan Reeve were found seven miles apart in the woods of Rockland County, New York, just north of New Jersey. Searchers were led to Susan Reeve's body by an arrow that was scratched on a highway embankment above the name Reeve. So Mm. he wrote her last name and then scratched an arrow into it. No. The autopsies revealed they'd both been strangled. No. Speaking of Halloween, on October 31st, 1975... Police arrested 35-year-old Robert Reldon in Closter, New Jersey, on a charge of attempted burglary. He'd been convicted of raping a woman in 1967, so uh, eight years prior, in his hometown of Teaneck, New Jersey, and he had served three years for that crime before being paroled. Uh, five months after that crime, he in 1971, he had pulled a knife on a woman in a hospital parking lot just minutes after his latest therapy session. God damn it. He was convicted a second time for that assault and entered Rawway Prison's Rehabilitation Program for Sex Offenders. He was considered a, quote, model graduate, and authorities were so impressed with his progress that they chose him for a TV interview with David Frost, who's this English journalist and television host Mm -hmm. who's pretty famous, uh, which aired shortly before his parole in May of 1975. He was held without bond on the burglary charge, and he was questioned about the murders of Susan Reeve and Susan Raines, but homicide detectives publicly announced that he was not considered a subject. Uh, uh, okay. Not considered a suspect. Mm-hmm. Wrong word. Blah, blah, blah. He is quite a subject, considering he's yours right now. He's definitely the subject of the hour. Mm-hmm. Um, nine years later, detectives changed their minds. Oh, n- never mind. <laughs> nine years. <laughs> but... It was another year before he was indicted on two counts of murder in January 1977. Four months later, on April 21st, Reldon was charged while in jail with plotting to arrange the deaths of his wealthy aunt and her boyfriend to get her inheritance. Of course. A detective posed... The way, this is the way they caught him. Um, a detective posed as a hitman and visited Reldon at the state prison and would secretly record their conversations as evidence. So he visited him multiple times in prison, mm. recorded their conversations, and that's how they... Arrest- they indicted him while he was in jail Hmm. Um, is that legal sure okay what (laughs) to convict him of it yeah i guess so um yeah so he's convicted of conspiracy and was sentenced to 20 to 55 or 20 to 50 years in prison which is kind of shocking that like you can rape somebody or like murder somebody and be in for less than that but if you like plot to kill somebody it's disgusting if you think about you can also you know buy a very small amount of weed and be in jail for just as long as Mm -hmm. a murderer or rapist and he didn't even kill well he did kill a lot of people but at that point (laughs) in that regard he was innocent like the longest time he was in prison at this point was because he plotted to kill somebody gross and he had already murdered several people um his first murder trial ended with a hung jury in june 1979 and a retrial was scheduled for that october during his trial that october reldon used a smuggled key to unlock his handcuffs sprayed his guards with chemical mace no and escaped from the hackensack new jersey courthouse (laughs) hackensack hackensack new jersey well that's terrifying they captured him hours later at a hospital in tuxedo new york after he crashed a stolen car into a ditch oh almost got away so close he also mailed hundred dollar bribes to several of the jurors on his case but the trial resumed the next day anyway hundred million how much money did this guy have hundred dollar bribes $100. Hundred dollars. They said a hundred million dollars. Like, <laughs> fine. You'd be like, you're innocent. I mean, you are. You are the least guilty person I've ever met. I feel my like life. I did it. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the money. Just to show everyone where my morals lie. <laughs> no, hundred dollar bribes to several jurors. Although he was, I believe, a multimillionaire. So beside the point. Oh. But okay. The, well, then he technically could have done it. He could have. Um. But the cheap, tra- cheap bastard. But the trial resumed the next day anyway, and he was convicted of the two murders on October 17th. So he was convicted anyway. Right. $100 wasn't going to do it. Two years later, Reldon tried to escape again from the St. Francis Medical Center, where he had his girlfriend waiting in the hospital lobby with a shaved-off shotgun. I'm sorry. Hmm. A sawed-off shotgun. All right. In a shopping. Or shaved. Shaved off. God help me. It was razor cut clean (sighs) it was really smooth um with a sawed off shotgun in a shopping bag and he was caught that time as well then in 1993 so this is uh several decades later uh robert decided to change his name to howard b jr 
while serving time at the state prison in Trenton, New Jersey. And in New Jersey, I guess it's common law where prisoners are allowed to decide on whatever name they want to be called, and they're allowed to get that legally changed for themselves. Really? Um, Really. As long as there's no, like, you know, reason why not. Right. But in this case, it turns out the prison's warden was named Howard Byer. So he wanted to name himself Howard Byer Jr. Turns out the prison's warden was named Howard L. Byer. But, but Reldon said that this had nothing to do with his desire to change All right, his name. Of course. <laughs> By the way, I'm changing my name to Christine Schieffer yeah, Jr. Exactly. But you don't, that means nothing to you, I right? was going to do that before I met you. It's fine. Right, yeah, okay. Um, his request was rejected, which they think is the first time that's ever happened because hmm. people change their name. All the time. Yeah, when they, when they go to, I guess when they go to prison. I don't know. I guess I can't blame them. But I guess it's the first time where they were like, no, this is not a good idea. Um, so unless a challenger proves that there is fraudulent intent with the name change. So that's exactly what happened. Um, the Bergen County prosecutor in the state attorney general's office argued that the new name could help him in hatching another escape plot. Um, some lawyers even said that mail to the warden could be diverted to him by accident. Hmm. Um, and a law professor at Rutgers suggested that, um, like if the, if uh, Reldon had purchased something like an expensive suit or whatever, that the bill might might be directed to the prison warden. Nice, and he could like divert expenses that way. Nice. Um, and then Ed Martoni, Ed Martone, executive director of the ACLU state office in Newark, said if he wanted to change his name to Mickey Mouse, he might have an easier time of it. So basically, this was just uh, like. There was no precedent to this. They were like, we just won't allow it. But this right. is the first time they were like, you can't change your name to your prison warden's name. <laughs> Please. Um, so I was reading this New York Times article about this, and it said, the, the last line of it said, it was written in 1993. But parole will be a long time coming. Whatever his name, the man also known as the Susan Strangler will not be eligible for parole until the year 2010. And I was like, 2010? Oh, my God. I was like, they won't be for a long time. Nope. Um, so that's... Did he get paroled? I, like, immediately looked it up. He's still in prison. Okay, good. As of last year. Good. Uh, Reldon remains a suspect in six other homicides, although no other charges have been filed. Um, so he murdered Susan. So he was convicted of Su- the, both of the Susan's murders, and that's why he's called the Susan Killer. Oh, okay. Found out he also has a little sister named Susan. Hmm. Not a great connection. Says something about him, I think. A little bit weird. But the story does not end there. Um, remember that aunt he plotted to kill for her money? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, she died in 2007 at the age of 92. Uh, hey, girl. I know. She made it. Leaving an estate valued at $200 million. Uh, she left nearly $9 million to Robert Reldon. Desp- $9 million? $9 million, despite his plot to kill her years earlier. Can you imagine being so shitty that you're willing to kill someone and they still leave you almost $10 million? <laughs> Can you like, imagine? Like, imagine if he was a good nephew. Oh, my God. Can you imagine the comfort level you must be at if you're like, well... Imagine, yeah, you must really trust your aunt to be like, nah, I'm going to kill her, but she'll be cool with it. It's fine. If I get caught, like, I'll just wait an extra 20 years and get Yeah, I'll still get the money. Mm-hmm. Um... So, actually, the people who challenged the payout was the family of Susan Reeves, who he had murdered. So, oh. her family challenged the payout and was like, you can't give this guy $9 million. He murdered our good. daughter. Good, yeah. good, um, And apparently, Aunt Lillian... Give me the money. Yeah, they're like, we'll take it. Apparently, Aunt Lillian didn't believe that he had wanted her dead and remained supportive throughout his whole trial. Okay, so she's in denial. Got it. Sure. In 2010, Reeves' family settled the lawsuit they'd filed against him, and the $10 million payout went to a scholarship in Susan's name at Hollins University in Roanoke, Virginia, which was her alma mater. Oh, my friends went to Hollins. Really? Yeah. Well, that was her alma mater, and so the $10 million went there instead of... Maybe, is it like a, an annual thing now? I don't know. Or is it, was it just like a one-time thing? That's just a, that heartwarming end to my story. Okay. Okay. That the money didn't go to the murderer, it went to the... No, that's super nice. ...university. Um, and then... There was a book called The Charmer written by former two former Bergen County prosecutors in 2012 about him, which is supposedly, I haven't read it, but it's supposedly really fascinating. And it takes a look at like his background and how it was, he was very like well off and very quote unquote normal mm-hmm. and how the psychology behind like how he did what he you. did. Oh, cool. Yeah. So that's the story of Robert Ralden. Oh, good. 
I feel like I do that every time you end a, a horrible storm. Like, oh, good. It's like, mm, am I, how do I smile, oh, frown at awkward. the same time? I feel like I blew through that. Sorry. No, you're fine. Whew. Um, if you had to get a scholarship. Sure. From a serial killer. Who oh. would it be? Oh my, what a question. Like, who would you feel, do you, like, would you do it purely based on. Like, were they paying for it out of their pocket? Like, this this exact situation where, like, they ended up not getting the money, so it went to your scholarship. Oh. Would you want it to be, like, a really interesting serial killer? Or would you want it to be... Who would you be least unguilty about? Because, like, if it was someone who like, was really fucking horrible and killed a lot of mm-hmm. people, I don't know if I could take the money. Yeah, like, but the money's going away from him, so, it, like, they took it from him, you know? I know, but I, it would still feel dirty. It would still yeah. feel like it, it was he was involved somehow. Sure, sure. Like, there's that psychology... Uh, I, sh- I, I should fucking know. There's this uh, way that we think about, like, how we'll judge even basic objects if it's related to something to someone with a bad with a bad impression. Really? So, like, let's say, like, a serial killer, like, wore, wore a shirt and then killed someone and then went to jail. Uh, Would you ever wear that shirt? Would like you even touch it? The association of... Yeah. Mm. So it's like, I feel like that would be me with the scholarship money. I'd be like, I don't know. Like, you, this was yours. Well, you know, some people believe that people actually do leave, like, bad energy on things. So I don't know. I mean, hashtag debit box. Seriously, I feel like it might be <laughs> part... Uh, I was just reading something about psychics who are like, every, uh, like, object has some sort of energy. And if you put bad energy mm-hmm. into it, it, like, so I don't know. Mm. But I don't know if that's real or not. Um, Blaze would say, oh my god, please stop talking. Well, I know Gia has some really good energy, that's for sure. Gio. I've never put bad energy into him. He's such a good boy. I hope I... I'm sorry I didn't answer your question. Um, I don't know. I mean, I would take... Literally, if someone's giving me money, I'd be like, sure, I'll take it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wish I could say otherwise, but... If someone was giving me a scholarship, looking at my student Honestly, loans... Honestly, when I think about it... Yeah, I, when I think about if someone were willing to pay me my student loans right now, I'd be like... Okay. Okay, here's a different question. If a serial killer mm-hmm. somehow roundabout you ended up with their money, what would you buy? Guilt free. Oh. As almost not just in like a not just like a, a normal million dollars where you would do it guilt free, but then like a an extra guilt free because like a fuck you. Yeah. Wait, so what is it's a million dollars? Say so, well let's do nine million since that's what he was gonna get. Nine million? Okay. Um someone give you nine million dollars, what would you do right now guilt free? I feel like I would adopt like a dog shelter. Is that weird? Oh, you would do something, like, philanthropic. Yeah, I feel like I'd be, like, inclined to, to be, like, well... To, like, balance I'm it gonna out. I'm going to better the world, you know? Right. That's, like, doing something exactly he wouldn't want. Exactly. So I feel like in that case, I... Like, if he was a mass... Like, a serial rapist or something right. like that, I would want to put all the money into, like, a battered woman shelter. Yes, exactly. Just to be, like, fuck you. Yeah, exactly. I think that would be the same thing with me. Which is okay. why I find this kind of, like, at least the mm-hmm. money went to her fund instead of, No, like, that feel, that's a good nail in the coffin. I also wanted to add that today and yesterday I went on iTunes and, holy crap, we got a bunch of new reviews. And they were all so kind. And thank you, guys. I read all of them and just get so happy. Um, so thank you for your kind words. They mean a lot and the reviews really help us. Um, a lot of them have clown emojis. Honestly, rude. (laughs) Um, You don't know me like that. Okay. A lot of them talk about Geo. (laughs) Oh, witty bitty baby Geo. Thought that might balance it out for you. So many people, when they actually see Geo, they're like, I did not expect him to look like that at all. Oh, really? Yeah. What do they expect him to look like? First of all, bigger. Oh, yeah. Second of all, someone thought he looked like a golden retriever. Oh, and then they were like, what the fuck dog is this? And I was like, that's my baby (laughs) Gio. We don't know. He's just a random. He's so handsome. He's like an alien dog. Little baby Gio. Someone said, I found you guys rather fortuitously when I was making a Twitter account for my own podcast. And the name stood out to me. A lot of people say that. They're like, I saw the name. We picked a good name. (laughs) Yeah. Thank God it's not Urian Theory anymore. I think if it were Urian Theory, we would have not picked up. Never. I think it, I think it's truly the name. <laughs> I think our guardian angels were like, God damn it, guys. We give you one task. I know, I know. God damn it. So anyway, um, thank you guys. We appreciate you. We really do. Um, you can find us everywhere. everywhere. If you've made it this far into our podcast, God bless you. God bless you. I don't have anything else to say. I don't really either. H-E-W-W-D podcast. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You can follow our personal 
Twitters. You can follow our personal Instagrams. You can follow our podcast Instagrams and Twitters. You can follow Geo at Geo Schiefer. You can... I have nothing to do with that. Once again. You really just like have such a weird curmudgeon opinion of it. Because all but I'm also not going to change. Because all you do is sit on it and like berate me. <laughs> through I mean, G- I do it anyway. Yeah. I just needed like a journal. Like a live journal. Like a Zanga. You know? Oh, fuck. What if we created a Zanga? <gasps> and that's why we drink dot Zanga dot com. What if we created one and brought it back? I'm not kidding. We could do that. That would be awesome. What if Geo had a live journal? That was my next one. What if we had a MySpace, a live journal, and a Zanga? I'm not kidding. I would. Oh, I mean, man. Wow, we would have like one follower, but worth it. Two, you and me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what more do we need? Anyway, thank you guys. Thanks, guys. Uh, if you're a Patreon supporter, our merch is on its way. It is on its way. It's on its way. Good. It's on its way right now. Sorry. We, we're really trying to streamline. No, we're good. We, it's, it's coming. We're good. We got ship station ready to go. Okay. All right, peeps. We love you all. And, and that's, that's why, why we drink. drink. <laughs> Emma's staring at me like, come on. Come on. <laughs> God, I'm a mess. <laughs>